Hi, this is Lisa from giftedguru.com, and I'm happy to share with you today some PowerPoint tips for teachers, and I'm going to focus on playing with fonts and some cool tricks that you can do with them in PowerPoint, and also some tips with images. So let's get started. First, I'm going to just go to a blank screen and show you what we can do with the fonts. We're going to start with fonts. Now, you may have noticed that my PowerPoint slide canvas is blank. That's because the first thing I do when I work in PowerPoint is eliminate the text boxes that are already in there. They have formatting already built in, including a bullet point that I don't want. So I'm always going to insert my own text box. So to do that, I just click Insert Text Box, and it shows up here. And then I'll type what I want. And I'm just going to type the word Teacher. I'm going to make it a large font so that you can see what I'm doing in an easier way. Now, this trick that I'm going to show you really needs a fat font. This font is a little bit too narrow. This is just the default um, Calibri. I'm going to choose from my drop-down menu a fatter font. Um, I'm going to go down and use Chunk 5 Roman. This is a nice, big, fat font. And I'm going to actually make it even bigger. Let's make it... And uh, two, 200, let's see what happens to it there. Okay, yeah, there we go. So I have this font. As you all know, we can change the color of this font by highlighting the text and using this little drop down and it has standard colors. It has some colors I've recently used. It has um, more colors that I can choose from. I can tell it what color I want using RGB. Um, some versions will even let you do hex there. Um, and then I can also do the eyedropper. So I can find something else on the slide if I had a picture here and I could match it. But what I want to do today, what I want to do today is show you a different trick. When I'm working in this text box, there's a, the drawing tools tab on the ribbon becomes open and you see that it says drawing tools way up here and then format. Now this might look slightly different depending on the operating system that you're using in the version of PowerPoint but you're going to have something that has this thing in it. So I'm going to click on that. And if you'll notice over here, I have text fill. And that's where the magic happens. I can come in here, and I still have the eyedropper tool and all of the other tools that I had when I was on the home part of the ribbon. But I also have a couple of other things. And the one I want to show you right here is picture. So if I click on picture, so let me, let me show you how I got here again. Let's go home. Notice the ribbon. You see home, insert, design, transitions. Highlighted over here, because my text is highlighted, is drawing tools format. Click on that. I want to show you the difference. Let's look again. Here's what's available for the font color and the font fill in the home tab of the ribbon. And now look what's available in what they call now text fill rather than font fill in this image of it. I'm going to click on picture and I'm going to choose from a picture I already have. So I already have these, these are background images that I've purchased on Teachers Pay Teachers, but you could use any picture that you have. I clue that and then that's what that looks like filling that font. Now let me show you a couple of other things I can do. Let's say I want to use a picture of something connected connected to my um, content. Let's say I'm teaching a lesson on Australia. And so I want to fill my font with an image of Australia. So let's see. Here's a map, Australia on the globe, and I click it. And now my font, oops, now my font is that map of Australia filled in. Now, let me show you something that might make a difference to you. Imagine that I had um, a second word here. I'll say teacher tips. Notice that as long as I'm typing in that same text box, in the same text box, it will continue to fill the font with that picture. But what I also want you to notice is it started over. So let's say I just wanted it to continue the same um, map. 
then what I would do is just continue typing and do a hard return in order to move it down, but then notice what happens. So you can only keep the same picture as long as it's in the same line. So it'll spread the, the picture across the same line of text. So that's one trick. Let's look at another trick. And I'm going to take this back to a solid fill to make it a little bit more um, noticeable. If it were in the picture, it wouldn't show quite as much. So I've got this um, font filled with just a solid color. And look what I can do with the outline. I can create an outline for it that I can even change the weight on. So I can make a pretty thick outline of that to make the font look quite a bit different. So let me show you more slowly again how I did that. Okay, so, whoops, did too much. So I have my font in whatever color I've chosen, and I'm on that same format tab. Under text outline, I choose a color. I'm in choosing purple because it goes with this pink here. And then I'm choosing weight. And under weight, I can choose any of these things including, I could also change it, let's go back here, I can do this in two ways. I can scroll down to weight under more lines, it will show you more line styles, or rather than weight, I can scroll down to dashes and do the exact same thing. So I could make it a dashed line as well. And you may want to do this, and particularly I use the third one down for this, if I want students cutting something out. So if I, if I have kids working in like a big letter V or something like that, I'll type the big letter V and then I'll make this dashed font outline and it will help them with scissor guides. Another trick that you can do in addition to the outline, you know, let's take the outline away. Um, in addition to the outline is that they have text effects. Now the text effects include shadow. So let's see what this looks like. Do you see the difference? Let's go up. No shadow, shadow. No shadow, shadow. And you can play with what shadows you like. This has to do with the angle of where the shadow is coming from, which basically says, what direction would the light be shining from? These are outer shadows. They reflect on the edges of the letters. If you choose the inner ones, then you see it's as if light were coming from the inside of the letter, making shadows along the borders. So you can do all of these things with shadow. Reflection will do similar little tricks, making reflections of the letters. Some of them, um, they tend to get more pronounced as you go down. You can do a bevel where you have the letters look different. I find the bevel effect not as useful. It just doesn't seem to give me too much of, a, um, of an impact. I can rotate the letters if I like. I do not typically use this very often. It, to me, it looks a little bit like what I think of as um, old clip art used to look like. It looks just a little bit tacky, but every now and then I do. Here's one I use. This one is the perspective relaxed one. And I'll do this to type out text to make it look like Star Wars. It kind of leans it back like those Star Wars things do. This is really turning the text into word art. And this can be helpful. This is under text effects, transform. I can make the word into a circle. I can make it do a couple of different um, tricks. And sometimes I'll do this in order to put text around a shape. So those are just some of the things that you can do with fonts. Don't let yourself be tricked into thinking that all that you can do is right back here on the home. Make sure that you go into the drawing tools and format from there. Okay, let's go into pictures. Have any of you ever had the experience where you insert a, insert a picture into PowerPoint and it just goes so huge and you try to grab it and you can't grab it? I'm going to solve that for you. You have a couple of options. Um, I'm going to show you the easiest one. First, insert shape. Choose rectangle. Make, make the rectangle fit over your PowerPoint slide. Now, double click on the shape. Click Shape Fill and choose the picture you want. 
Now, my slide is oriented in landscape mode. So this will work with pictures that are themselves in landscape mode. I'm going to show you what happens if I do a landscape mode picture. Let's just click this Antarctica picture. I click insert. And now that picture automatically fills the edge of my, all the way to my slide. Now I'm going to come in here and choose no outline for my shape. And now if I go, let's do slideshow. Um, I'll go back to this one and then say from current slides. So you can see now when I advance my slide, it just fills the whole slide. It just looks like it would have if I had been able to insert the picture in it fit perfectly on the slide. But as I mentioned, my slide deck right now is in portrait mode. I want to show you what would happen if I did that with a picture that was in portrait mode. It won't work. So I, I'll have to tell you how to fix that. So I'm going to go back, do insert shape, make it fill the whole um, slide, choose shape outline, no outline, shape fill, picture, now, I'm going to choose a picture on purpose um, that is portrait mode. Do you see this picture of these ants is portrait mode. I insert it and look, it gets all distorted. I'd have to move it in here to make it look right. So you can do a couple things. You can orient your slide deck portrait if your pictures are that, or you can edit the picture um, within the shape. So you see what I did? I made it, uh, I drew in the edge of the shape until the picture was no longer distorted. And now what I can do, if I still want the picture to fill the slide, I'm going to have to crop it. So um, that's not really possible in the shape itself. So you would need to use an image editing software for that. And I would suggest PicMonkey or Canva or any of the any of the ones that you use to crop pictures. You can use Picasa for it if you want. Anything that you want to crop pictures. But the trick that I showed you about filling the slide only works if the slide orientation matches the orientation of the picture. Now this still will solve the problem of it being too big. You just have to make sure that the ratio of um, height to width is similar in the shape as it is in the image. The last thing I'm going to show you is where I get my images. I have two places I'm going to show you. There are loads more, but these are my two favorite. This one is called Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. You see it? You just type in whatever you want to search for. I want a picture of the moon. Um, this first row that's going to turn up is going to be sponsored images from Shutterstock. I don't recommend those because they cost money. Scroll down. All of these images that you see are free. They are copyright free, royalty free, no attribution required. And as long as you have a free account with Pixabay, all you have to do to download it is click free download, choose the size you want, and click download. And then that's it. I always leave a comment down here just saying thank you because they took the time to give this image to me. The second place I go is iStock Photo. Now they are absolutely not free. But sign up for a free account because if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, every week they give a free photo, a free illustration, and a free video file. And so I just have a tickler in my calendar on Tuesdays. I go to iStock Photo and download my free pictures, illustration, and video. Now, do I need a picture right now of a woman climbing a wall? No. I don't need a picture of a woman climbing a rock wall. But I might need it in the future, or one of my students might need it for a project, so I do download these. I hope these tips have been helpful. The good thing about having it on video is that you can pause it and stop and play with it yourself, and I do recommend that you try it a few times. For more ideas, you can I'll put in a link in the description box to my um, YouTube video on how to create printables in PowerPoint, and please visit giftedguru.com. I've got lots more free downloads and ideas on that site.